Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, uh, back in the shop again for another real quick video. Um, this is to help the guys that are putting their rib attach angles onto their spar. And we talked in the last video about drilling the, the rivets to length to get them for the proper length to go through the spar and then these attach angles. These are the angles I was talking about. And you can see there's a set of holes right there that the that the rib will eventually rivet to those. So this is what holds the rib to the spar. So <clears throat> according to the plans, because, and, I, and it's gonna be maybe a little difficult to see, but there's two layers of material. So there's a spar web in the center, it's 32 thousandths. Then there's one or two layers, depending on where you are on these spar caps, thickness of 1 8 bar. So if there's two thicknesses, it's a quarter inch. If it's one thickness, it's an eighth inch. And then there may be, on the, on the back side of here, which we will show you when we flip it over, there may be two thicknesses, or there may be one thickness, or there may be two on one end and one on the other, whatever. But you have to make these spacer bars, which is what this is. This one happens to be a quarter inch thick, to fill this gap in here. So when you rivet on, your attach angle, it's sitting on material all the way across. So it's, a, so it's supported properly. And then when you put the rivets through, then, then um, it'll be, you know, it'll be attached to this situation properly. So in the Bearhawk Builders book, they talk about these attach angle or these, uh, excuse me, these spacer bars. And what they have you do in the book is they have you drill five holes in them. And you can see I have five here. One's on center and then every inch or so. That's the spacing, actually it's exactly one inch. So two and a half and then this is at one and, uh, it's at a half inch, one and a half, two and a half, so on and so forth. And then what they want you to do is they want you to line all this all these shenanigans up on both sides and then put a double flush rivet in the center hole. So you would take your countersink, here I have one right here, and you countersink, you can see it uh, for those who don't know what a countersink is, but it puts a beveled hole, let's see I have a good example of that over here somewhere. Of course now that I want that piece, of, oh here it is, I found it. It'll put a beveled hole. You can see that hole's beveled. So a flush rivet can sit down inside of it. And you're probably wondering what a flush rivet is, so I guess a, we'll show you everything as best we can. Let's see here. Here's a flush rivet. So the 426 flush rivet. And uh, what makes it flush is the head. See how the head is flat? And then when it goes into the hole, you can see how it, well, you get crazy there, Dave. You can see how it just sits flush in that hole. Because this hole's got a conical, conical recess or a, a beveled recess cut in it. You can see I'm trying to get it to focus. It's kind of kooky. But you can see right there. And then, of course, a button head, which is this type of rivet. It's a 470. It sits flush against the material like so and then you get a little button head. Anyways, what they wanted you to do was put a double flush rivet on these. So you countersink one side, you put the rivet in, and then you countersink the other side and you drive the bucktail down into the countersink and then you come back with a shaver and you shave it off so the top of it's flush. And what they're doing is they're riveting this part into position with that, that one single rivet. And the reason it's a double flush rivet is because you can't have a button head there because this plate has to sit on top of it. So it has to be flush. Well, first of all, countersinking and double flush riveting these is a pain in the neck. Um, I don't have a rivet micro shave, so I have to shave them with my whiz wheel and I gotta be really super careful. It's kinda almost stressful to do it. Secondly, just the extra actions of setting up your countersink tool to the proper depth, 
countersinking each hole, you know, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's just, a t it's just consuming time, and I've been on this thing a month already, so I thought, if I double flush rivet that, I'm going to burn up a bunch of time doing it, plus that rivet now doesn't contribute to any of the strength that's holding this piece on. There must be a better way. There is. What I did is I took some rivets of the appropriate length, you can see them in my hand right there, and I pinned this piece, those rivets. Just put the rivet through the hole and just let it pin it right in position. Put one in the center, now it's pinned in position. One over here, it's pinned. Now that piece is pinned in position. It is not moving. And I take the best tool in my shop ever, the masking tape, and I just tape those rivets down so they just stay where I put them, just like that, and just like that. Now you're probably wondering why I put one here, one in the middle, but I didn't put one down here at the end. Well, the reason I didn't is because I'm going to take my clamp right here, and I'm going to be clamping right in this area, so I don't want that button head right there. The next thing I do is I flip this whole mess over. So here we go. We're going to try to flip it over right here, live on camera. Oops, take that out of there. We need that. Flip it over and uh, get it centered back up again. And you can see, I hope. You can see those little rivet pins sticking out there, there, and there's one there. So now I take spacer bar number two, and I drop it into position. And I'll tell you another thing too, guys, that if you're doing this, mark, mark which one is number one, which one's number two, and I put all my numerical marks at the top. So I always orient these things in the right way because each one of these is a custom fit, and if you get them mixed up, you're going to lose your mind trying to get them all squared away again. So anyways, drop it in there. So now I have a real nice fit. That piece is pinned in position temporarily, and then I can take my... Now remember, I didn't put any rivet right here, because I want to clamp in this area, because I'm going to drill this hole. So I'm going to take my metal here, and... Uh, get the right one. By the way, this is the number eight rib, so the angle, the attach angle is reversed from everyone else. So this one actually sits this way, like so. And we'll Coleco that on there like that. Now what I want to do is I want to clamp this down and hold it so I can flip it back over again and drill this hole from the other side along with all the other holes. And we're going to go ahead and do that. First thing I want to do is I want to get this 90 to the, to the spar. And the way I do that is I take my little 90 degree jizz wicket here, stick it up there, slide this over until I get lined up right about square, which is right there. And I take another piece of the tape and I just tape that down. And the reason I'm doing that, tape really isn't going to hold it when I start to drill on it, but it will hold it enough when I'm clamping this to keep, you know, because you're going to bump it with the clamp, and then if you're like me, I can't remember if I shut my garage door half the time, I have to drive home, you know, let alone something as important as this. You know, you're going to bump it with the clamp, and then I'm going to constantly be coming back and checking, and I'm going to drive myself crazy. So I just tape this thing down so it can't move, generally speaking. It's not going to hold it very mechanically, but it'll hold it to the touch. And then I take my clamp, uh, two bucks at Harbor Freight, guys. You can buy the official one uh, who makes it, um, Vice Grip, I think, makes these. This is $18 at Lowe's. This is $2 at Harbor Freight. So I'm thinking Harbor Freight and then out to lunch, and I'm still money ahead. And there's one thing I don't like to miss, and that's a meal. So two bucks at Harbor Freight. Use your head. Get them there. Even if, the, even if you have to mail order these things so you don't have a Harbor Freight, I mean, if you mail order, if you get five of these things coming, you're going to have 10 bucks invested, five bucks shipping. You're going to have five of these for the price of one at the Lowe's. So, Harbor Freight. Anyhow, 
take this bad boy and you kind of work it in through the hole there. Now remember I don't have those rivets there so I can kind of just feel where this is. Sneak it right up on there. Get my fingers out of the way. And give her, you know what, that's really not tight enough. Give her a squeeze. Okay, that's locked in there. There's my ADD kicking in again. I'm going to check it. It's good. Now we flip this thing over and we drill the holes for the rivets. And the reason it sounds like I went away is because I went and shut off my air compressor so it doesn't kick on in this video. So the next thing we need to do is just flip this thing over. Um, hopefully we can get this on video. I may have to move the camera. We need some... Uh... Okay, that's good. And yeah, we're we're kind of still on camera there. There we go. We can get it. Take our drill with our number 21 bit in it. And we are going to drill this hole. So it's simply a matter of sticking her in there and... So now I've got the two the two uh, spark cap rivets, the main rivets if you will, in position to hold everything. And, and, and you can see now everything's kind of pinned in position. It can't really move. So I got a Clico here, a Clico here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'll change out my, my bit. And by the way, the next time I get the Harbor Freight, I'll be buying me one of them $35 air drills even if I wear the thing out after you know 500 rivets it's worth it to keep from having to change bits all the time anyways so now I'm going to go ahead and drill the number 30 holes there's one and I, I like to Coleco this thing up like crazy probably more than I need to but I want to make sure that things don't move so there's our rivet pins and we're slowly removing the pins. So I'll go ahead and throw that one in my little box. Drill this one out. And uh, here's another tip too guys. I'm going through some uh, pretty thick material, you know, better than a half inch. These are long reach Calicos for number 30. Um, difference? Here's ones for sheet stock. See the, the little nub sticking out? It only sticks out yo far. And then this one sticks out so it gives you the grip length you need to hold this, uh, this assembly together. It's a few bucks, but it's, uh, it's no big deal. Not a few bucks. They're uh, what, 89 cents a piece. So I got 60 of them for, I don't know, $45 or something like that, and that should be enough for this project anyway. And another thing too guys, you want to drill your holes in everything. I mean if this was just a single because some of these some of these locations have a nose rib and a, and a center rib and some locations just have a nose rib. If you're doing just a nose rib don't get in the mindset that you can drill it and then just rivet it. You want to drill it and then take it back apart and clean all these shavings and crap out from underneath inside there because they'll get everywhere. And uh, if you don't do that, you won't get a good solid seat for everything to sit on. So we'll go ahead and hit this one here. Like so. And we're going to go ahead and leave that one on Coleco. We'll take our clamp off. We can get in there and get it. And drill the final hole, which is right here. Okay. And that's it. It's drilled. Now all I have to do is uncolico this one, like so. Take my bar out of the way, and you can see there's a little bit of material underneath here. Take this out. We're going to go ahead and flip this back over. This bar is getting heavy. Here we're back in the photo. Untape our tape, which served its purpose well, but 
it's time for the tape graveyard for that on Coleco. And you can see, now watch, I haven't done anything, I'm just going to lift this up. See all the metal shavings inside here? You want to make sure those all get cleaned out. So, it so happens that this particular station is a double rivet station, or double rib station, I should say. So that means now, I've got this one match drilled. It's now match drilled to this. And I don't have that double flush thing going on, so I saved a bunch of time there. And all I need to do now, and remember we, we talked about it in the video or in a post the other day, I, I index drilled this hole at a half inch. So I, I don't have to measure, you know, I just, it lines up and then the other one falls where it's supposed to fall. But now what you do is now that you've got this one all set to go, you just Coleco them together with a Coleco back to back of like so. And now, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put this flat on a table like that and I'll come in and I'll, I'll drill this hole, Coleco it, drill this hole, Coleco it, and I'll just basically match drill this piece to this piece, deburr them, stick it in here, start riveting, and I'm done. So you can see, oh, might as well just leave that like so. You can see here, oops, one that's done. We'll slide it down your way if we can get it to go. Here's one that's been done. And they're all nice little 470 button head rivets right there. They're all contributing to holding this piece in place and uh, making our, our spar stronger and utilizing every bit of material we can to make it that way. So, there's a little helpful hint for you. I'm not a big fan of the double flush. Maybe you're a rivet guru and you can do it in your sleep. I say rock on. But for those amateur guys like me, um, this is the way to do it. Just go pin them in, like I said. Use your rivets for pins. Pin this piece in. Flip it over, index it, you're golden, you're good to go. Obviously, uh, you want to use a rivet that comes through the hole here, but not all the way past the end of this because you have to, you know, you have to sit down on top of it. So just use a short rivet. You don't need to fill the hole. Just, all you're doing is pinning it in place so it won't move. All right, I hope you found that helpful um, for you guys that are putting the wings together. Um, for those of you who tune in just for, you know, giggles to see what I'm up to, that's what I'm up to. All right, till next time, we'll see you in the shop.